Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have an excellent attacking game to share with you from 1900. On the white end, the great Harry Nelson Pillsbury, and he's playing against Georg Marco. This is a model game for the Pillsbury attack, and who better to show us the way than the pioneer of this very attack? On board, we have a very popular position out of the Queen's Gambit declined. Play continues with b6, not quite the Tartakauer variation. The Tartakauer is after first including h6, bishop h4. Black's claiming h6 is more useful than bishop h4. Nice to have the flight square in most cases. All right, in this game, it's b6 straight away, of course, totally playable. Play continues with bishop to d3, pointing at the king side and bishop to b7. So it's after the bishop has abandoned this diagonal that white releases the tension. c takes d, e takes d. Black could, of course, consider taking with a piece instead and try to control the center with pieces, but a pawn is now going to be around to try and restrict white center. Now, the bishop is blocked by the pawn, but do know that it is still functioning. It has indirect support over a knight jump into e4. Now, there are a couple prerequisites for the Pillsbury attack, so if you're trying to implement this in one of your own games, here are the things to look for. One, black's queen bishop needs to be fianchettoed, and two, it needs to be obstructed by a pawn. We'll see why this is the case in just a little bit. Now, white's next move is what signals the Pillsbury attack. Knight e5. This is the first piece improvement in the position, and it is time sensitive. It's important not to play this position on autopilot. It's the opening. I'm supposed to castle. No. Castling now will allow black to get here first, controlling e5. And now if you hop in, you're knocked out right away. And you have to take with the d pawn which means this pawn has the chance to move. Totally different structures are now on board. 4 to 2 for black on the queen side, 5 versus 3 for white on the king side. Different structure, different game. Knight e5 now. Knight d7, f4. Totally different story if the knight is captured in this case. White will gladly take towards the center, and the king rook will be especially excited about the half open death file. Now, with this last move, it is not without its drawbacks. There's now a gap created on e4, and for the next few moves by black, this is an appealing continuation to hop straight in to e4, and I'd like to touch on this variation. First of all, what is the knight jump doing? It's creating tension between the bishops. It's helping black to develop on e7, and it's interfering with the bishops. When we consider the light square bishops for each side, they're not opposing each other. They're, you know, pointing in totally different directions, but there is that one intersection square, e4. There is a way to interfere with this guy pointing right at the king's side by hopping into the hole. By hopping into e4. So let's have a look at this variation. You could see how black could consider continuing. Queen knight could follow in the king knight's footsteps. This is a nice way forward for black. The idea, in a way, is to work around this strongly placed knight on e5. Maybe one day black could even consider uh, some, some continuation like this where. Once there isn't a knight on f6, you could think about f6. Now, remember that earlier point I pointed out with uh, h6? It might be a more difficult piece to kick away if h6 is already in there. You'd have a new square to worry about as black. There'd be a hole created on g6. If you have the opportunity to play the Pillsbury attack, I think what you may find is that the inclusion of h6 makes the attack a little more appealing might be more difficult for black to try and extract the knight from e5. Okay, 
In any event, after f4, e4 as a whole, black could think about hopping straight in right now, even a couple moves later. Play continues in this game with c5. And white now castles. This is another opportunity for black to make use of the e4 square with first a capture and then hopping in with similar continuation as I just shared. Now, one of the thoughts that I had in preparing for this video, in preparing with this game, is, you know, I kept seeing that e, knight to e4 was a, a really nice move for black. So I thought to myself, wait a second, remember how uh, we didn't castle in that one position, we went with knight to e5? Could we maybe do without castling in this position and instead play queen to f3? Another move that is characteristic of the Pillsbury attack. Uh, another move that characterizes the Pillsbury attack is this queen f3 move. Um, this is not a good move to play while uncastled. And there is a beautiful variation. I just have to highlight those of you who enjoy geometry are maybe going to fall in love with this one. <laughs> Um, it's important to first be castled before playing queen f3, and here's why. Check this line out. c takes d, e takes d, now the knight jumps in. The bishops are in tension, they're exchanged. Knight takes knight, pawn takes knight, bishop takes knight. Black is winning this position after knight takes knight. This is awesome. <laughs> For black, of course. If you take the knight with the d-pawn, the queen gets to go to b4 with check, and the bishop is hit for a second time. Black wins a piece. And if you take in the other direction with the f-pawn, the queen makes use of h4 with check, and still wins that bishop. That is a really neat line highlights the importance of first castling. That queen on e7 opposite the king has these two excellent pivots on b4 and h4. Okay, castles first in this case. Play continues with now c4. This is where black starts to go in the wrong direction. It is better to take and then hop into e4, but that never comes. In this game, it's c4. This releases the pressure on d4. Bishop backs off, stays off the back rank, stays pointing towards the king side. And now in comes a6. So why was black playing c4? Was the train of thought, oh, I'm attacking the bishop, and if he doesn't see it, I'm going to win the bishop? Definitely not. The idea here is to, with c4, create a majority on the queen side. With this last move, black has created a 3-2 to two majority on the queen side. And in time, black can produce a passed pawn. But doesn't have the time for that, because this attack is coming really fast at the black king position. a6, preparing b5, b4. But now in comes queen f3, only after castles. You'll notice in this position, if black tries to hop into e4, black would end up losing a pawn now. After takes, 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 knights move backwards. The c pawn is lost. Okay, so black simply continues running with the majority, a6. Queen f3, now there's no hopping in here. We have too much support over it. In comes b5, and now queen h3. It's this knight on e5 and queen on h3 that really characterize the Pillsbury attack. And with this last move by white, the planets are really aligning. Notice the pressure on d7 by the king knight, and the pressure on h7 by the king bishop and look how the queen coordinates with them both. Intersection squares deep in black's camp. That's where accidents happen. Tactics for white, in other words.
they are right around the corner. In the game, Black continues with G6. If Black continued storming away on the king's side with B4, this one is over because of these tactics. You ready? Knight takes knight would follow. If you're taking the knight, it's going to be a mate in two. Check, checkmate. And if you take with the knight, it's mate straight away. And what else? If you take with the queen, there's this trick. Bishop takes h7. Knight takes bishop. Queen takes queen. We win the queen. King in the corner, we're still going to win the queen. Discover, check. She's a goner. Okay. No time for b4. Black tries to shut down this diagonal. And does. Temporarily. At the same time, Black has provided white a hook with f5. So now, in time, both white rooks will soon flood the king position because of this engagement. Upon exchange will occur. The f file will be peeled open. There is no save here for black. This is overwhelming. From here, it's b4. F takes g6. No time to take the knight because we're smashing through on f6. We're eliminating the defenders of h7. So what is tried is the immediate recapture. And now in comes queen h4. This is excellent pressure on the knight that is now pinned. No great way to unpin it. No, no way to make use of these squares and still try and defend the bishop. Don't have access to those squares. In the game, it is pawn takes knight. If you're trying a move like king to g7, you simply get rocked back. And white is smashing through with bishop takes g6, or excuse me, knight takes g6, threatening mate. Pawn takes knight, we have check. We could smash through here. We just take stuff. Everything is super forceful. There's a check. There's a checkmate. King to g7 doesn't work. It's going to lead to mate. What is tried is b takes knight. Now in comes knight takes knight. Queen takes knight. And we're taking on f6 with the rook. White would prefer to end up with the bishop on f6. Uh, ca uh, carving into the dark squares. Looking for mate on h8. At the same time, f1 is now vacant for that final attacking piece. The queen rook. Black attempts to try and save this one with a5. Queen rook trying to fight over that f6 square too late. The rooks are doubled. Rook a6. Bishop takes g6. Threatening mate on h7. How do you stop it? Can't stop it. It's a forced mate. Rook takes rook check. Rook takes bishop check. Queen h8 check. King f7 is the only move. Queen h7 check. There are three options now for the king. e6, e8, f8. If you go to these two, the white queen mimics the king's movement and its mate on the spot. King e6, king g6. King e8, queen g8. The move played in this game, king f8 allowing queen takes queen, and black resigns. There is no continuing here. It is a mate in two with these very moves, no matter what black does. Bishop h6, queen g7, game over. This is a beautiful attacking game by Pillsbury. 26 mover, uh, a fantastic finish. Great to see that nice build up on the king side. Let's have a look at the tail of the tape on this one. We could see just how accurate Pillsbury was playing in 1900. Uh, the one blunder that is being registered, we cannot consider a blunder. Rook A to F1, uh, going from a mate in 11 to just a plus 7, we can hardly consider that 
a blunder, 96% accuracy versus 83. Very high quality game, and maybe one that you may want to consider uh, experimenting with in some of your own games if you have the opportunity to do so. So, anyhow, feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.